Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to just get started by congratulating that man, Kansas Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Um, well deserved, well earned, and it's been a fun three years with you, and um, so excited for you. And I think that's a, a really cool deal. Um, we're on to kind of a mock game week. Um, we gave the players off yesterday and uh, had first day of classes, and then today we'll get them back. Uh, we practiced Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, right before school started, gave them Monday off, and then today we'll get into kind of a, a mock game, uh, mock week uh, with Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice, and then we'll do a mock game on Friday night, just trying to get underneath the lights um, uh, at 6, 7, 8 o'clock in that range to uh, get acclimated to that, and then uh, um, we'll start truly into our full game week uh, a week from yesterday, but I know the guys are excited. Um, you guys saw we named six captains uh, last Sunday, uh, uh, totally voted on by by their peers, guys in the seats in here uh, when we had the vote and excited about those six guys and how they represent Kansas State uh, on the field, off the field, and um, um, we're excited about the leadership that uh, those guys are going to bring, as well as a bunch of other guys because we had a lot of guys receive votes. Um, we're going to play a really good South Dakota team. I'm very familiar with Coach Nielsen. I have tons and tons of respect for Coach Nielsen. He's a winner, uh, won at every place he's been at, and he's got a good football team that was a playoff team last year. So we'll just start uh, really game planning this week and ramp it up more next week. You had said you adjusted your practice schedule a little bit this year to allow you guys to be more fresh. Do you, do you feel like you've accomplished that? A hundred percent. It has worked really well. Um, we've really eliminated, I'd say, most of the soft tissue injuries, um, which has been a, a little bit of an issue. Part of that is cutting back a little bit. Part of, part of that is uh, the overall emphasis and education by myself, by Mindy and, and her staff, by True and his staff, by Scott Troush and his staff, of, of educating the guys on you know how to take care of their body, um, maybe getting them out of here a little bit earlier at night during camp, and um, seeing guys fresh every day. You know, it's a grind. You, you have camp for three plus weeks and it's a grind, but uh, uh, I commend our guys. Uh, they were fresh every day. Uh, maybe maybe we didn't have some days as good as others on the practice field or an offense win or a defense win, but we were uh, a, a lot more fresh. Not too far from, from game prep, as you said. Is there any position battles kind of still ongoing and left undetermined at this point? Uh, I think more the amount of guys that we feel can contribute is more this year than it's been in the last couple of years, whether that's on special teams or whether that's on offense and defense. We went through a, a depth chart on special teams in here yesterday, and we have you know, three and four deep at some spots that uh, we're going to be able to play some young guys um, to find out if they're ready for offense and defense by what they do on teams. Uh, I'd say we're getting closer to who are those 16 to 18 guys that are going to take the lion's share of the reps. But uh, position battles, um, you know, there's, we're going to split time at a lot of spots. Do you have any more certainty who you feel comfortable with at safety at this point? Yeah, uh, better depth, better um, competition there. You're going to see a lot of guys there. How is the linebacker unit coming together and the numbers shaping up? Uh, it's been really good. Been really pleased. You know, we have Daniel Green, who's kind of the catalyst back there. That I think he's a uh, dynamite player that's really taken his game to a, another level. Uh, and and he has Nick Allen in there, and then Austin Moore uh, is is really doing some really good things at the at the Will linebacker spot. Um, Will Honus. Um, has done some nice things. He's been nicked up a little bit, but we're excited about uh, Will's progress. And then uh, um, we've got Sean Robinson at Sam. Uh, Des Purnell, who we've moved to, to the linebacker spot, is doing a nice job. And then um, Khalid will be back this week, and um, we'll bring him into that mix as well. So we have more depth there. And we're, we have some young kids we're really excited about too. You mentioned Nick and, uh, and Will, mm -hmm. the health status for – for Nick Allen from what he's come back from? Uh, amazing. Um, you know, he did uh, – he had his injury last regular season game and uh, shows you the 
the time, the discipline, the effort that he's put in to get his uh, body right to be um, as far ahead as he is. Great job by um, our athletic training staff and um, by Nick to getting himself ready. He, he didn't miss a practice in the fall and, and uh, playing really fast right now. So you mentioned Khalid there. Will this be his first time practicing? You bet. Yeah, but we're excited that he'll he'll be ready to go. Like I told you, he'll be ready to go week one. Uh, and we have about two weeks for him. How about uh, Andrew Lion Gang? He's another guy we didn't see. Um, he's battling a, a an injury that we hope by the middle or end of this week uh, he would be uh, doing some teamwork stuff, and we anticipate him being available uh, for South Dakota. So I wanted to ask about Adrian Martinez. It's maybe somewhat unusual for somebody to come in and become a captain as quickly as he did, especially that he didn't really play in yeah. spring ball. What, what do you think he did to win everybody's trust there? Um, part of it is the position, and uh, and part of it is is the demeanor of Adrian, the, the personality of Adrian. Um, he's a very engaging uh, person. Uh, he's a very positive guy, uh, very mature, uh, and just the way he – built bonds with all sorts of different positions, you know, not just on the offensive side, but the defensive side. And um, he, he deserved it. He earned the right uh, from his peers. And uh, I'm excited for him because I think he's finally, and know he's finally comfortable at Kansas State and knows um, he has high expectations and knows he has a lot of people around him that can help him. So um, he deserved the honor of being a captain. As far as the cornerback position goes behind Echo and Julius, how's that kind of shaping up? We talked to Coach Malone, and he highlighted some guys, but I'm just yeah. kind of wondering if you've kind of figured that yeah, part out. Yeah, um, great competition back there. Omar Daniels, um, who is a redshirt freshman, missed a lot of his freshman years playing playing well, uh, taking some snaps away from those two older guys to give him some, some reps. Um, uh, Jacob Parrish, a true freshman, we think we'll play him. And uh, he, he's a guy that is just going to continue to get better, uh, but the stage has not been too big. I, I'm excited for Jacob. Um, we have Justice Clemens. We have Jordan Wright. We have a lot of guys that were still in the mix, whether it's for playing time on, on defense or on special teams. We have more depth there, but it's, it's great to have two guys with as much experience on the field as Echo and Julius. Those two, those two guys are going to carry the lion's share of the role, but we, we have to find ways to give those guys a break. As far as the nose guard position goes, um, a lot's been made about obviously getting D. Hints and Eli Huggins back. Um, anybody stuck out through camp in that third spot? Yeah, uh, for starters, Eli and, and, and D. are going to take the reps. I mean, we're going to keep those guys fresh, and those those two keep each other fresh. Uh, Damian Alalio's done a really nice job. Uh, Uso's done a nice job. Um, we're trying to continue to push those guys by giving some reps off of Eli and um, indeed during some you know, uh, K State versus K State, but there's good competition there, and we feel like we've we've added some depth with those two. What's the progress of Jacob Parrish tell you? I mean, he went from being a possible walk on to probable walk on to blue shirt, the full scholarship, and now he might play. It's is that kind of what sometimes recruiting in Kansas can be? It can be. I have a different picture of what that was. Um, <laughs> because myself and Coach Bratt were really the lead recruiters on him. Uh, and there was no way that that kid wasn't going to be a scholarship guy. And uh, I, I saw him at camp the year before, and I just loved the, how competitive he is. Um, but the thing that you don't know that we learned is – how he loves to go against Cade and, and Philip and RJ and Malik and, and battle and compete and, and play fast. And he's, he's understanding what we're doing um, schematically and just putting those things together from a mental side of it as well as the physical side of it. Um, now, I don't know how many plays he's going to play based on the two older guys we have and, and as he, he continues to develop. Um, but um, – uh, he's a guy that's too talented not to play this year. As a follow up to that, <clears throat> does it show kind of how valuable your camp system is to the very core of your recruiting? Yeah, especially regional guys, um, in state guys uh, that have come here and, and earned the right and, and uh, shown us in, in person what they can do. Um, and we had better numbers at, at our camps this year than we had in 2019, which really was the last big camp. Um, and 
it's still going to be a big role. And I think our camps are going to grow once we have the indoor done. That's, that's difficult right now. We have one field, and then we take a bunch of the O-line, D-line men into the cool uh, indoor uh, on the other side of Bramlage, and now we're going to have two fields side by side. I think it's going to really help our camp situation. And finally, with Adrian, we all know his history. We all know the ups and downs he's had. And by all accounts I'm hearing from camp, he's cleaned up a lot of those issues, but do you really know until it it's a real game? Yeah, I, I, we're doing a lot of good things, good on good, and he's having to go against uh, the first-team defense. And has he made mistakes? You bet. Um, he's owned the mistakes. Uh, he's learning from the mistakes. Um, and it's going to take some some game reps as well as him getting more comfortable um, with – you know how Coach Klein calls it. You know I, those two are on the same page, but I think it's going to take some repetition um, in, in games. But I, I see him playing so fast and so much faster from practice one to practice four to practice eight to practice now fourteen fifteen where we're at uh, that um, he's getting more and more comfortable and he has all the talent in the world and uh, um, we're excited to to cut him loose and he's going to make plays. I know that. One more, Deuce Vaughn. Uh, I mean, he kind of scared off the rest of the the room, at least yep. the main depth chart. Where do you feel like you are in that right now as you head into the season? Uh, continued competition. It's been great because we've been able to shelve Deuce an awful lot during fall camp. Uh, DJ Giddens uh, has has made that next step for us in in practice. Now we need DJ to make that next step in games. I think he's more comfortable, more confident. We believe in him. He's going to take a, a good chunk of reps because we we need to find out. And, and DJ's ready for this, and he's prepared himself. And so that's the one that I would say um, right now would get the most reps behind Deuce. Um, last year at defensive end, you went big with Jalen Pickle on one side. Is that still kind of the plan with the three men or three down, or is Nate Matlack someone who could step into – yeah, we did that for a couple reasons last year. Some was the personnel we were facing, if we were facing two tight ends and some bigger people. Um, and, you know, Nate was, was still young uh, and not as big and as strong as he is now. We have the ability to go both ways as far as having uh, bigger guys like Pick in there or going, you know, quote, smaller with Brendan Mott and Nate Madlock in there uh, along with Felix. We're going to play a lot of guys still at defensive end and – um, regardless of of the offensive personnel, we need to keep Felix especially and Nate fresh. So we need to play Nate and, and Pick and, and Cody Stuffelbean's going to roll in there as well. We need to play a lot of guys in there, especially during this non-conference time, to see what the best you know what the best combination of guys is too. I've heard a lot about the the kickers and punters, the specialists. What, uh, how have they been doing this? You haven't heard a lot. And Randon's in that room. Come on now. <laughs> um, I hear about those guys every day. Uh, the great thing is they're all returning, and uh, that's really good that you haven't heard much from them because these guys are just business guys that just go about their business and do things right. And um, they're still on catapult. They're the fastest guys. Uh, they're really good. They're athletic. Uh, I know that Ty, we've not kicked and punted as much in fall camp to try to preserve and, and make him um, be as effective early season to mid-season, mid-season to late season. I think Ty's um, going to have a terrific season because he's understanding his body and how to manage. Um, Chris has got a cannon for a leg. We've put him in a lot of different positions, um, coming off the field, two-minute situations, all that stuff. I'm excited for Chris because I think he's going to capitalize on the opportunity he has. Um, Jack Bloomer is the guy that's probably the most you know, unheralded guy because what's he do? Well, he holds which is the number one thing for a kicker and a long snapper is make sure it's going to be held, and he's one of the best there is. And Jack's a kid that's on punt return. He's on punt. He's on kickoff return. He's doing some other things to help us um, because Ty's a little bit ahead of him in the punt uh, respect. And then, um, you know, Randon's kind of the glue with all those guys. And um, so it's a great room, and it's great that we haven't heard much about them because uh, it means they're doing their job. Coach, what did you like about the, the development of the, the quarterbacks behind Adrian over, over fall camp? Um, 
everybody knows about Will Howard, and Will keeps getting better and better and, and uh, more poised, more confident in what we're doing offensively. Um, Jake Rubley's really impressed me this uh, fall camp. He's uh, um, just going about his business. He knows he's got to continue to fine-tune some things, um, throwing the ball really well. I'm excited about Jake because uh, um, Jake's gaining confidence and uh, – understanding of what we're doing offensively. And I sit in the quarterback rooms quite a bit with Coach Klein, and um, it's fun to hear the dialogue because they're they're all involved in the dialogue. It's not just Adrian and Will. It's it's Jaron, it's Jake, um, even Adrian Lara, uh, a young player that uh, has a, a great, great arm um, and is just learning how to play college football. And then uh, uh, Jaron's in that room. That's a big security blanket for everybody in there because he's played for us. And we have a really healthy quarterback room. And then, sorry to jump back to, to yeah. the captain thing, but this is the second straight year that a, a first-year transfer has been named captain after Timmy Horn last year. What does that say about the guys that, that you guys are trying to get out of the transfer portal in here? That you're accepted. You know, you're accepted if you come in and do your job and do your work and build relationships and um, be yourself. Um, Cade Warner's a transfer, and you know, he's only been here a couple of years. But um, um, we have a really good locker room right now. Um, it's very healthy. We've got a lot of tremendous leaders. We have 23 guys on our leadership council that those captains would tell you the same thing. You could name any of those 23 guys in that leadership council and and pick those six, and we'd have just as prominent a captains. It's, uh, it's, it's very healthy when you have 23 guys that represent all positions that are leading the football team. Um, and that's what uh, we wanted with this leadership council to establish, uh, and they have done that. It's why, all, to the first question of why was our fall camp, was our fall camp much better, you know, were we um, healthier, were we fresher, all that stuff. It's a Big tribute to those guys, too, because those are the guys that are echoing out in after every position meeting. Hey, man, get, get your rest tonight. Get your hours of sleep. Get your hydration. Make sure that uh, um, you're uh, eating right. Make sure all, get your extra recovery, all that stuff. That That's huge to have that leadership, not from a handful of guys, but we have 23-plus guys that are doing a great job of that. And then, Coach, everybody knows about Phillip Brooks, Malik Knowles, and Cade Warner. Another guy we heard a lot about was R.J. Garcia in that receiver room. Mm -hmm. Has he started to elevate himself and put him into that, put himself into that group? Yeah, he's in that. He's in that mix. I, I'm a couple of guys that uh, jumped out at me as the fall went, fall camp went on. Um, Seth Porter just keeps getting better and better, and he's been in the program a long time. R.J. Uh, we're, being a really a redshirt freshman or in his second year. He's really made a jump that I'm excited to watch him play games. Um, Jaden Jackson's done some really good things, uh, being a new player, learning our offense. And uh, Keenan Garber's had as good a camp as uh, any of the guys that, that you mentioned to start. It's now um, having that confidence and that belief that I'm going to be doing it on game day. And so we have a lot of depth at the wide receiver position behind the three guys that have you know played a lot of football for us. Offensive line goes, obviously having the ability to have Cooper Beebe play inside as well as outside. How, how much does that take the stress off of you as a coach to know you have positional flexibility? Yeah, we've, we're going to get Carver Willis back this week. That's missed some time. We're going to get line, Andrew Line game back later this week. Uh, that's missed some time. We need those two guys back so to, to relieve some of that stress on Duff and KT and Biebs and, and uh, uh, Taylor Poitier and, and the guys that are in the mix in there. Um, it's going to make us a lot better. Uh, we're deeper in the offensive line once we get these backup tackles back that, that are in the mix. Uh, but it's a real comfort level for Coach Riley to know that, you know, we're not six deep. We hopefully can be eight, nine, ten deep. Sam, Sam Heck's doing a really good job that nobody talks about. That's a, a young player from Kansas that is learning from these older guys. But Sam's held his own in there against uh, Eli Huggins and against D. Hens and, and some of the better players. And so I'm excited about his progress too. Everyone kind of talks about Felix and Daniel Green. But you kind of look up and down your defense. I think you have at least ten guys that have been in college football for at least four years. You get several here for a sixth year and one, I think, for a seventh year. Do you think that goes overlooked? Uh, it doesn't by us. It, it, you know, Josh Hayes has been a guy that has been um, steady 
and very productive from the time he arrived here in the spring. I've seen him play um, on a national cha- in a national championship game as a true freshman. A guy like that has played a ton of snaps, but no snaps for Kansas State. So I'm excited to see and watch how he makes our defense different and a little bit better. There's guys like that. Kobe Savage has played some football. Drake Cheatham's played some football. Sincere Mason's played some football. Sean Robinson's played some football. But they haven't played a whole lot for Kansas State. Sincere did a little bit. Those are the guys that I'm excited about that are kind of new or transferred in, um, but uh, has created that great depth for us. And now they just got to get experience doing it in our system. Is Jane Jackson another receiver coming along that you expect to count on this year? Yeah, he will. He's one of those seven or eight guys that's doing a really good job that's going to continue to get into the mix as he keeps learning what we're doing. Probably difficult to make the evaluation at this stage, but true freshman that you can foresee that there's no way that we were able to redshirt this guy. Yeah, um, Jacob Parrish is one that we've talked about. VJ Payne's another one that uh, is working in the two deep. Um, and then Jake Clifton um, has taken some reps in the in the two to three group uh, that has a chance. There's 15 freshmen that are in the mix on special teams uh, that we have to make the decision on. Are we going to try to play those guys early in that non-conference season and then shelve them or say, no, they're, they're going to keep playing or we're going to handpick those four games? And about the incoming – Offensive linemen that are freshmen who have stood out from that group? All of them. It's a great group, uh, and they just need a year with Coach True, and they would tell you that. I mean, they're they're 260 to 275 pounds, um, closer, some closer to 280 now. They just need to develop, and they're learning so much from Biebs and from Duff and those older guys, but uh, um, we hit on those guys, and that's the thing that we're excited about. We hit on those guys as, as being really good um, people, really good uh, love football. They just need to develop. In terms of the return game, I mean, I, I'm assuming Malik and Phil will still be back there. Is there anybody else you're working out at that spot in practice? Well, hopefully it's Malik and Phillip. You know, it's been that way since I since I've been here, and uh, um, if if they're healthy and they're ready to go, they're going to be back there because of same thing. You guys know they're they're, they're going to they get a chance to take it to the house. So we're gonna we're gonna focus on those two, and we're gonna keep working guys back there. Um, but um, uh, those are the main two. I also wanted to ask in the in the bowl game with Colin as Colin plays. I mean, obviously it was let's be super aggressive, pedal to the metal. And it worked. Is that mm-hmm. going to be the same philosophy every game this season, or do you want him to dial it back just a little bit? Um, it's a hard question to answer because of how the games go. We would dial it back if we're – like I think we did against LSU. We were up, I don't know, 42-7, to seven, and we took the pedal you know, off, the, off the gas a little bit. Um, but we were aggressive when – I think Russ had a pick, and we were really aggressive and scored. Uh, it's going to be picking and choosing our times. Plus, how are we doing defensively? You know, can we go f- super fast and try to um, get a bunch of plays in, or do we have to scale it back a little bit based on us as a defense trying to slow people down? It's. I know that the the mindset has been uh, aggressive, but there's not as many plays in a game right now as there were three or four years ago. That's just the natural thing. It's cut back a little bit. For us, we need to elevate it to get it 10 more than what we've been, 12 more than what we've been. But I don't think it'll be 90 plays. Do you remember during the uh, you know the bowl prep process, the first time you started to kind of think to yourself he, he might be the future offensive mm-hmm. coordinator? Um, I was hopeful as we were going through the entire prep uh, but when I when we arrived in Houston, I can't remember if we had five, six days, somewhere in there, I was very confident that what I was hoping for we were getting uh, in, in how he was managing, how he was leading, how he was motivating, how he was detailing the plan with everybody, not just players but with coaches, that um, by the end of that bull prep, um, it was uh, it was pretty set in my mind that this was what we were going to do, and it was just icing on the cake that uh, uh, the kids responded and played pretty well. And um, you guys, not sure if you know this, that Skylar Thompson's a pretty good football player, and he's kind of proving that right now. Yeah, um, 
it sounds like you, you probably have across the board more depth than you've had at any time, but is there a position group or two that's still a concern in that area? Yeah, linebackers, just because we have some new guys, you know, that um, haven't played there a bunch. Uh, but we, we have to keep working, guys. Des Purnell is, it comes to mind as an, as an example. Um, Sean Robinson uh, is new to our program. You know, Khalid didn't get a chance to play in many games uh, one game really at, at linebacker. So, yeah, uh, we're, we're top heavy with the starters being really good. And now we just have to keep developing depth there, which we have the depth. Bo Palmer's doing a really good job that uh, is a special teams guy that's continuing to improve as a linebacker. And you lost some people off special teams last year, lost too. Lost a um, lot of snaps. Uh, how has that gone filling in those spots? Well, that's what we're talking. We feel like we have more depth. We just need to find and mix and match the right guys in there. Um, Nick Allen, uh, Seth Porter, Ty Bowman, Austin Moore. Um, those are a handful that I can name that are kind of guys that are always on these teams. Um, but we're starting to gain more more depth um, with a lot of our new players and young players. And uh, one of the things we're going to emphasize this week is a lot of special teams work and take out the Nick Allens and Austin Moores and um, Seth Porters and see what – somehow these young guys respond when we throw a lot of stuff at them can they communicate and, and execute at a high level how's Ben Sennett been this fall camp he's been he's been really good uh he's uh, fast he's strong he's athletic he's moving around really well I think the game is starting to slow down that was the thing that caught to him up a little bit last year because he missed some good time in fall camp because he got injured um that he's healthier now so um, with Ben, it's just repetition, 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 and he's a guy that uh, the more reps he gets, the better he gets, and uh, I'm, we're excited about him because he's a, a difference maker on the offensive side in the in the blocking aspect of it as well as in the receiving aspect. 